In certain genres of electronic dance music, robotic sounding pianos can work. Great for those old school ravey type pianos. But in other genres of electronic music, having robotic sounding chords and pianos can actually be detrimental to your music, which is why I wanna show you how you can make more human pianos sounding like this. A lot more emotion, groove, and smoothness to this piano. And I'm gonna show you a few tips and techniques, seven in fact, to get your boring MIDI piano sounding like this. Now this video does assume you know basic music theory. If that's not you, make sure to check out our free chord progression cheat sheet below in the description, which has you covered with everything you need to know about chord progressions from basic chord structures and how to voice different chords, and even a few example chord progressions that you can use in your own music. And now that you've got that, let's dive in. Okay, so for tip one, I'm gonna go over note offset. Now this is the most basic form of humanizing that you can do to a piano or any instrument really to make it sound more human and organic and like it's being played by a real person. Now first I'm going to show you the example I've got here which is a nice electro breakbeat type drum loop over the top of a pretty standard sounding piano for now. All right, now I want this to kind of sound like bicep meets Nils Fram or something like that, but at the moment it sounds like bicep meets a five-year-old who's just learned how to play basic chords. So I wanna make it a bit more expressive and we're gonna start with this note offset trick. So what I'm gonna do is load up my MIDI piano here. Now I've programmed these notes in by hand. Really quickly what we can do is simply just grab some of these notes. Now in Ableton, you can hold command and move these notes. And instead of snapping to each note on the grid, it's gonna move really nice and smooth like that. And what you can do is even just by small amounts, move each of these notes off the grid a bit. You can move it a bit later. You can even move it a bit earlier. Just make sure that it's after the start point of your clip and just make it sound a little bit more like it's being played. You know, when a piano player plays, they don't hit the chord at the exact millisecond time. There is that natural offset. Now, when you do this, you do have to be careful that you kind of tighten up the ends a bit, give it a bit of gap there, because obviously we might wanna go to this chord and do the same kind of thing. Now, as you can see here, I'm kind of doing it in a way where the bottom note is first and the top note is last. This is that kind of effect where you get that strum, right? It feels like a guitar being strummed, but it's on a piano. Now you can do that. You can also go the opposite way. You can kind of go a bit more random depending on the vibe you're going for. One thing you can also do in Ableton is right click and actually turn the grid off if you don't want to hold command or control. Basically, you can just go through all of your chords and do this and give it a bit of that natural offset. You can see there if I move it too far off, uh, over the it'll move, kind of overwrite the next note. So that's why you want to give it that little bit of a gap. And I'm just going to go ahead here and just give each of my like notes an offset, kind of even with this melodic notes up here, play a bit of a melody and kind of just see where I can get to. And then I'll show you the final result. Sounding way better and let's hear that with the drums. Now there is an art form to this depending on the style and genre you make. In a electro or house or techno example like this, you don't wanna to go too off the grid because otherwise it'll sound too random with the more straight edged rhythmic nature of the drums. But in a hip hop or a trip hop or a future beat kind of example, you can get away with a bit more of a looser, uh, more groovy, sloppier rhythm, for lack of a better word. By the way, if you're wondering what piano I'm using for this example, it's the Ableton uh, with Spitfire Audio collaboration. This is an upright piano that Sweet users can get for free as a separate pack. Uh, I love this piano, absolutely amazing. Okay, so the next thing we can do in tip number two here is to add velocity randomization and modulation slash variation, however you wanna look at it. So basically what we're wanting to do here, and the easiest way I like to do this is just to add some randomness to the velocity of the piano. The way I do this, as I mentioned, is I just 
select all the notes, and I'm going to click this randomized knob. Now I'm going to bring down the value so we get less randomization. I don't want to go too crazy with the amount of randomization because that will kind of be almost too unpredictable. I'm going to bring it up to about 30 here. Once I've done this, I'm going to listen to it and see how it sounds. Sometimes I might bring this value down and do a few more randomizations just to get a bit more nuance to the, uh, you know, accentuation of certain notes. And then I like to also bring them down overall. If there's any standout notes like this one, I might just bring them out so it's just not too crazy. Bring up the volume to compensate for the volume loss that happens when you bring the velocity down of notes depending on the VST you're using. You can also select certain chords and randomize just those chords if there's one particular chord that doesn't work. Yeah. This is sounding really nice now. We've only done two things. We've offset the notes and added some velocity. The other thing you can do here is grow into the uh, MIDI effects, add this velocity device and play around with the random here. Now this will randomize it each time it's played so it's not consistent. This is great if you want your piano to be random throughout the whole track. As I said, I like to kind of commit to the MIDI I have got, which is why I prefer to do it in the editor, but this is a great option if you just want unpredictable random MIDI velocity. Okay, so tip three is to think physically. Now, what I mean by this is think of a physical piano. Now, I've got a physical keyboard here. I don't know if you can really see it. But if I'm looking at my piano here, I can see based on the chord progression that I programmed in, certain voicings and certain note movements might not make the most sense in all cases. So I actually might be able to go and play around with the way the notes move between each other. Now, it's fine to have chords that kind of jump entire blocks like this, rather than having smoother voicings. But you also have to consider the fact that your hand is gonna take longer to move between those chords. So you maybe what you wanna do is go ahead and, you know, for example, that bottom note's probably gonna come out there. Give it a bit more of a gap because it's gonna take you physically more time to get to that chord. Same with these notes here, give it a bit more of a gap. But, you know, chords that are closer to one another, for example, these notes, we're playing the same note here. So there's a good chance we could use the same fingers. And that's why we could, you know, shorten the gaps on those ones. Ones that are close to one another, we can have pretty close. These are pretty close to one another. Um, but yeah, if you think of your whole hand having to move down, you don't necessarily always want to have huge gaps. Uh, those are fairly close. That one could overlap a little bit. We could probably think of like, you know, my note running down. I could have a little bit of an overlap in those notes, which is why I've done it over here as well. In the melody, I can kind of be a bit lazy with my playing so to speak. But also what I can do is look at, okay, maybe I want to uh, look at bringing this note up here because maybe it would make more sense to play the chord like this. Not, not really working for me, so no. I'm actually fine with the voicing of these progressions. I actually am pretty happy with that. I like the bass note kind of having this long run. Okay, so tip four is to rhythmify. I kind of already did this in tip one where I brought this C sharp two note out a bit. In fact, I brought it by an eighth note uh, earlier so that it kind of gives it this more of a rhythmic vibe. It just gives it that subtle sense of groove. We can do this with other chords. You know, you can bring the note offset off by a, a eighth or even a quarter note. Or even a sixteenth. And you can kind of also arpeggiate chords if you really want to. I'm gonna take this note back here to kind of let that become the melody so that we're not playing the notes at the same time. I'm gonna do something like this. Uh, maybe even like bring this note in again at some point just to kind of, again, rhythmify the, the pattern. Maybe even do that with the bottom note too. Bit of subtle, Something, something different, right? We want something different. See how that just adds a bit of loveliness to the, the pattern. We're not just having a blocky kind of sounding chord. And of course you could do arpeggiators or something like that, bring the gate up. 
the problem with arpeggiators is that they sound a bit robotic. So you'd probably have to bounce out the MIDI and then make these kind of more manual timing adjustments again, like we've done in the first four tips here. So tip five is to actually add what is called convolution reverb to your piano. Now, convolution reverb is amazing because it mimics a real space. It's a recording of an impulse response, which is a click in a real space applied to a digital signal, which gives it the quality of a real physical room, which is amazing. Now the Upright Piano by Spitfire Labs here has this reverb built in using Ableton's hybrid reverb, which actually has a convolution engine built in. So I've actually got this example here and I'm just gonna bring up the reverb level and time. Sounding really good there. I might bring up the reverb max. Sound just gives it that, that extra sense of space. Now, obviously I can go here and actually change the uh, space that I want to choose from maybe this silent warehouse. Or the Igni Church or the Moses Chapel. I'm going to also just bring up the dry weight a bit on this sound. If you want a very roomy sound, this works quite well. I'm just gonna flick through a few more of the impulse responses. Can even go 100% just to hear it. Now this does have a convolution and an algorithmic reverb, so I'm gonna go more towards the, um, uh, the convolution engine. And so I'm gonna actually mute the uh, algorithmic part of the reverb. Uh, yeah, algorithmic color reverb, which is the second part. I like this one. Let me now bring in some of this one, lengthen out the decay. I'm gonna set to serial as well, so we get both reverbs running into one another. Now we've just got a very realistic sounding space, which I love. And of course you can go a bit more creative depending on the vibe of piano you're going for, which is probably a topic for another video. So tip number six is to actually use a real piano sample and convert that to MIDI to kind of see the randomization techniques that a real piano player uses in they're playing. So what I would do is just go into my sample library. Now, if you don't have any samples of pianos that are good, you can get some off Splice or Loop Cloud or one of those services. I recommend Splice just because there's some great sounding pianos on there. Find like an actual, like not just a one note sample, but like something that's got a progression to it. I'm gonna drag in this, it's 174 BPM, but I'm gonna drag in this piano here. I'm gonna click harmony as the audio to MIDI conversion. Melody might make sense for certain things, but melody will only have one note at a time, which is not always what we want. So I'm gonna do that. And we can see here when it converts to MIDI, we don't have to use the piano as is, we can actually kind of transform it into our own version, but at least it's a great starting point. Now this is too fast. So I'm actually gonna grab the full clip here. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, times it by two. So I'm gonna extend the length by double. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the loop is off and we can listen to the slowed version. You can see there's a lot of nice timing offsets there. There's a lot of velocity differences, which are already tips we've gone over. But now that we've converted this to MIDI, we can use this uh, patch. We can even go up a key or something. We can use some of Ableton's MIDI tools to kind of uh, give it some randomization, bring the velocity down. We can uh, reverse the MIDI. Invert it, you know, we can we can kind of create our own pattern. We can get really technical and go in and change the actual notes if we had time. This is already sounding sick, you know, we could give it a good down. There's a few mistakes I can hear in the MIDI, which you might just have to correct. This note here. And you can even go more wild, we could invert. 
reverse. Kind of go nuts and see what you come up with. The last tip is kind of self-explanatory, but it's to play something in. If you're not a piano player, it's okay. You can always go and edit the MIDI later and make it sound more professional and nuanced and actually kind of do the opposite of what we're doing. Quantize your bad mistakes, you know, correct notes that are wrong and, and kind of use the opposite processes to get something closer to a more on-grid sound, right? So I could, for example, go here and I'm gonna enable my MIDI keyboard. Let's let's just uh, double check our uh, latency here. We might just bring it down a little bit. Okay, let's come up with something. I'm just gonna record it on the fly. Try with the metronome on. The latency meant that I got quite a bit of lag there, but we can again go and see what is recorded. There's a little mistake there and uh, start to fix it, right? We can see that this is quite offset so we can bring it back. And there you go, you got a nice, uh, you know, starting point where you can actually work backwards. It's always easier to like kind of correct recorded playing if you want it to sound human rather than it is to go and do all the manual processes. At least it will save you a lot of time. So both approaches work. You can program in your notes and make them more human, or you can kind of start human and edit them to make them more proper and professional sounding. Now there's seven techniques that I use. If you have anything to humanize your MIDI pianos to make them sound less boring, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear them and perhaps I'll cover them in another video. But again, if the whole music theory side of things with pianos and instruments and composing is beyond you as a producer, check out that free chord progression cheat sheet below in the description because it's got everything you need to get started making amazing chord progressions. If this video was helpful in any way, shape or form, make sure to like it so it gets spread around YouTube like wildfire and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with videos from our team we post at least weekly sometimes multiple times a week and i'll see you in the next one